My name is Angelo. I'm 37 years old. I'm an archaeologist. I love my job, especially because it gives me the opportunity to travel the world and visit, study and explore all sorts of different and fascinating historical places. I was always very interested in the occult, spiritually and magic, learning how ancient civilizations valued those aspects of life so much led me to believe that there was something there, something scientific and multidimensional. Even the Roman Empire, the Egyptians and the Greeks, who had highly advanced and technical societies, placed a lot of their importance in their gods, demons and their knowledge. I also studied that according to some theories, there are some energetic fields throughout the world that are particularly important, powerful and meaningful portals to other dimensions, ways to communicate with super beings, which perhaps we would call aliens today. So when I finally visited Egypt, I was very excited. Although the pyramids had already been explored a vast number of times by qualified people, but I still wanted to make my own investigations all around the area. I didn't go alone, of course. Two colleagues and friends of mine went with me, Daniel and Lucas. Once there, we hired a local guide, Abdul, that would lead the way. We decided to camp near the pyramids and do our research for a couple of days. Ah, oh, we're finally here. It really is a magnificent place, I said, as we were all gathering around the fire, close to our tents. It was already night. The first day had been fascinating. Although we didn't discover anything new, like wandering the pyramids, but it was still worth it. Absolutely. The Egyptians built these enormous buildings right above the Orion constellation, hoping that they would capture the cosmic emanations from those stars, Lucas replied. Yes, they believe the gods themselves live there. But the fact is, the pyramids are still here, as the Sphinx. Who knows what hidden treasures and wonders are still buried under these sands of time, Daniel said. Indeed. What do you think about that, Abdul? I asked. I'm proud of the history of my country, but I don't know about all that. I never saw anything out of the ordinary, and I've come to this area dozens of times throughout my life. Well, I'm going to sleep, sir. Tomorrow will be another day of exploration, Abdul replied not revealing any kind of enthusiasm, which I understood from his point of view. I think it's a good idea, Abdul, that we all get some sleep. I'm off to my tent as well. Good night, gents. Have good dreams, with Cleopatra, if possible, I said before entering my tent. <laughs> they all laughed, sounding tired, and did the same. After a couple of hours, I woke up. For some reason... I was feeling excited and decided to leave my tent for a while. As if I wanted to be alone, I captured the essence of the ancient Egyptian night. I can't explain it, but against all the rules of basic security, because that region is sometimes frequented by thieves, I had the urge to walk. It was as if an inner voice was telling me to do so. I couldn't hear any words. It was more like a thought. I started walking, not exactly towards any pyramid, but to a precise place nearby. It was strange, because somehow I knew where I was supposed to go, and where I was supposed to dig. It's here. Something is here. I started digging as fast as I could. I needed to know if something was there. And with a huge smile, I found a small box made of metal. There were no inscriptions on it. With my hands shaking with excitement and anticipation, I opened the box. Inside there was a tiny bag, made of some kind of animal skin. I opened the bag and saw a yellow powder. Out of instinct, I smelled the powder, and immediately I absorbed it through my nose. My mind started shifting. It was as if I'd started taking some kind of drug. I lost my senses. 
And when I woke up, I was still in Egypt. But this time, it was in ancient Egypt. I was now dressed differently, in fact. And my body was also different. Even my gender. I realised I was now an Egyptian woman. But that wasn't all. I was tied up and being taken away in some kind of chariot pulled by camels. Of course, other men were conducting this task and driving the chariot. Astonished, I was now able to understand what they were saying. And I asked them where they were going to take me. And when I spoke, both my thoughts and words came out in ancient Egyptian as well. In that language, one of the men responded. You know well where you are going. You are going to be sacrificed to our great god, Osiris. It's quite an honour. Embrace it. As we approached a big fire, close to what seemed to be an altar, I started screaming. Two Egyptian high priests were waiting there for me. I could identify their rank via their clothes. Once there, I was taken from the chariot by force. My desperate protests were completely useless. As the priest started chanting some kind of mantra, the men who had brought me threw me into a fiery pit. I was literally being burnt alive. I kept screaming as the flames were now consuming and disfiguring my body. Fortunately, I felt myself having a heart attack, which was the actual cause of my death. And then, I woke up, lying on the sands with the sun up in the sky. I was still holding the small metal box I had found. Lucas was looking at me, throwing water on my face. Finally, you're awake. You should have known better to wander off like that alone. Some animal or criminal could have killed you. But I see you found something. What's inside the small box? Lucas said. Slowly, I realised I was once again Angelo, the archaeologist. The box was now empty. It's just nothing, I guess, I replied. Hey, what's that on your left arm? Looks like a pretty bad burn. If you caught yourself on fire, that's not just a simple sunburn. Your skin is partially disfigured, Lucas said, pointing at my arm. I, I don't know, Lucas. I don't know, I answered without knowing what else to say. Subscribe today, or beware.